Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you guys are getting up and feeling well out there this morning and having a great start to your day. Great week out there so far. Got you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise for today. We are expecting a pretty active day. Severe weather. All hazards are possible. Hail is going to be the biggest one. Damaging winds will be an issue also. And there will be a low-end tornado risk that we need to talk about, and we will. And then also the same system is uh, creating a winter storm across areas of the plains up into the upper Midwest. So we'll talk about that also and get you guys some good information in this video. You know, some cold air is coming in behind this system. How cold is it going to be for everybody? We'll figure that out here really in the next day or so. But we also are still watching this weekend into next week. Um, but I can tell you the system for early next week is really I would say downtrended into not as a significant event, but it is the system is still there. It is just being suppressed. And we'll we'll show that briefly at the end of the video, kind of what I'm talking about as what, what being suppressed means. It's basically getting pushed southward. But um with that being said, I just want to thank y'all for the growth here in the first half of March. Uh things typically slow down as we get into March and really April as severe weather becomes the bigger topic and really the only topic besides any kind of late season kind of uh, winter mischief out there. But if that's not happening, severe weather is the big topic. If severe weather's not happened, there's not really a whole lot to talk on. And then summer, it really slows down. So, you know, the jury's still out uh, how summer will do. Uh, you know, summer is always the... Even though things slow down, summer is always the biggest tester on my YouTube channel to really see how the growth really went uh, over the active times because, you know, I got over summer last summer and, you know, we got down to about 1,000, 1,500 views per video. And it got to the point where there was just nothing to talk about for a couple of weeks and uh, I just kind of started doing one video a day. So I just, you know, with all that being said, thank you all for people who just tune in. I always want to show my appreciation. I'm huge on that. I'm, I, I was I was raised on that. And uh, I wish people would do it more, especially people who hold leadership positions, show appreciation more. Um, but uh, just thank you all for people who, you know, who make this a part of their morning and evening routine. Uh, it means the world, and it really gives me the fuel to really keep pumping out this content. So thank you all for that. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, uh, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. And hit that subscribe button if you if you haven't, and uh, like the video if you like it. It goes a long way. Thank you all for the support. Let's get rolling here. Wider vapor loop. Our upper trough is setting up. We got you know a piece of energy impulsing off the base of this upper trough, and this is helping to bring a lot of low level moisture into this area. Uh, you'll probably start off uh, kind of crisp, kind of dry out there, but uh, you know dews will certainly dew points will certainly rise very quickly all the way up into Oklahoma today where you'll have a, a moist sector and basically a sector of an ingredients that are going to create severe storms. And, um, you know, we got winter weather up here to the north. You know, it's snowing in portions of Nebraska right now where it was in the 70s yesterday. But, you know, we talked about that last night and how that was going to happen. And certainly it is this morning. We look at watches and warnings, freeze warnings still up. These will get dropped later today. Uh, you might hang on to some freeze warnings maybe up here for tonight, but uh, most of everybody's going to get ab stay ab above freezing tonight. Freeze watches reissued for areas of western Tennessee, northern Mississippi, Mississippi, and then a large portion of Arkansas. Freeze warnings also up um, where another blast of cold air is going to move through and then drop a lot of folks below freezing again. Winter storm warnings up. Weather is snow falling for a good portion of Nebraska right now. Winter weather advisories in the purple. Winter storm warnings up for these sections in northeast Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and the western UP of Michigan. Winter storm watches remain in effect where there's just still iffy on if it needs to be upgraded to a warning or an advisory. Um, but it's going to be pretty windy too uh, today with just an ejecting low pressure as typically happens. So, uh, you know, you're going to have some windy conditions with this. It's very windy. Almost, we probably have some brief blizzard type kind of conditions here in Nebraska this morning, um, but nothing that warrants a blizzard mornings. Um, but the Storm Prediction Center out there today, an enhanced risk. This is not upgraded to a moderate risk. I don't expect it to. It remains an enhanced risk. This does include the big cities like Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth, and surrounding regions. This expands all the way into southern Oklahoma and then a very small section of southwest Arkansas. And then we got a slight risk around it. There's going to be multiple storm modes, but basically multiple areas of interest today. And we'll, we'll kind of touch on that here in a second. But the biggest threat 
is hail. There is a 30% hatch risk of hail, which means basically in this red area you see, there's a 30% risk of hail, and there's also a 10% risk of significant hail, meaning two inch or diameter or larger hail. So, you know, not there's a chance that some, some areas in this higher risk area might not even see a storm today. There is a chance, but I would take the precautions you need for hail. So if there's a way that you can sneak your car into a carport, if you don't have um, or um, like a parking garage or if you don't have a carport or garage, just try to find a way to, you know, certainly protect. Here comes the sneeze. All right. OK, we're good. I, by the way, I feel a lot better uh, over the last 24 hours and my allergies have pretty much went away, but occasionally still getting a good sneeze here and there. But <coughs> please be aware of hell in this section of the country in, in Oklahoma and Texas and portions of these states today. Wind damage. Um, well, the chances of damaging winds are going to be there. 30% risk of damaging winds pushing 50 knots or higher is 55 to 60 miles per hour. That does include Dallas, too, in the Texarkana area. So certainly be aware of that and get a sip of water. But um, there is a tornado threat, but it's a little bit further east. Basically, where the low-level jet is really kicking and going to develop this morning, Um. It's going to be displaced from the thermodynamics. We talked about that last night a little bit, but there's going to be kind of a displacement, if you will, from basically the best fuel to really explode these thunderstorms and then uh, the ingredients you need to really spin these updrafts. And uh, you're going to have kind of a fleeting section of favorable 850 millibar winds that's going to be kind of leaving, and there's going to kind of be an area in between that, and then you're going to have a ramped up low-level jet that's probably going to develop more west of this risk area. That's really going to probably potentially develop more of a linear threat, more of a line of storms that's going to sweep through portions of Oklahoma and Texas. So we'll definitely watch out for that. Let's go on and look at the AARR model. Here's the low pressure this morning, kind of ejecting across Kansas. And as it does, one thing to, I'll tell you right off the dot, storms will fire up here probably up here to Oklahoma City and even up to Tulsa potentially based off the latest eight strip R model. Immediately behind this, you go about three, four hours to the west, you got cold air filtering in very quickly and you might have a band of snow making its way through Kansas uh, later this early, well, really early this afternoon today. And this continues and then these storms are, are firing up. They could be producing damaging winds and large hail in, in southern Oklahoma and especially in northern Texas. And, uh, I mean, look at the snow here. We got a nasty line of storms working its way through areas of eastern and southeast Oklahoma at around, you know, 6 p.m. tonight. And at the same time, you got snow falling in northwest Oklahoma. So, certainly a crazy day of weather in Oklahoma expected today. But these storms will explode here. One thing I will tell you is it, is, is it looks like you're kind of, it's not looking as bad as far as like a super silk type mode, but that that could change. OK, these are only models. They're only they're not used as gospel, just guidance. OK, but, you know, you see an occasional renegade sail out here in the warm sector. You got to watch out for these, because remember that low level jet, that better kinematic field, better wind energy that's helping to spin these storms. is kind of moving more so kind of into areas of the mid south, if you will. Um, but they could be spinning some of these storms right into here. And in fact, let's just go on and get a little bit closer to this and uh, see how this could develop for you folks in Oklahoma and Texas today. Here's these storms. They fire up. This is around 3 p.m. Central Time. They fire up Tulsa, Oklahoma City getting hit hard. Then on the kind of the trailing end of these storms, you got some more initiation firing up. Bang, right along the Red River, some nasty storms start to fire up just north still. As we're getting into 5, 6 p.m., we're starting to get later in the afternoon. Look at this area of snow behind the storms. Pretty wild to see. Just tells you how sharp this cold front is. And kind of a linear set setup kind of begins. This is around 6 p.m., but you could have embedded large hail in this line of storms. And then you have a little bit of initiation kind of just south southwest of Dallas. And then these storms quickly form. And, you know, it... Listen, I'm going to go on and throw the disclaimer out there now. There is a chance that somehow Dallas, Dallas-Fort Worth, doesn't get any storms today. <laughs> there is an outside chance that if something like the HRR model happens, you could get this energy up here that trails off and doesn't form any storms down here to the south. 
and then you can have an initiation of storms to the south of Dallas and somehow you guys get right in between that and don't really get bad weather. There's a possibility. But these when these storms continue to push, large hail possibility in all these, but what I want you to look at is these storms right in here have that 5% risk to produce a tornado. So please be careful in the Texarkana area. I would especially say, you know, th there's enough ingredients there to put a spin to some of these storms. Very low end tornado threat, but it's there today. So please watch out this area right into here. We go a little, and then, well, let's keep going. We keep going, you know, this begins to enter the southeast frame of this. And these storms start to blow through Little Rock probably in the middle of the night. And then knock on the door of Shreveport probably, you know, 12, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, there is the chance for some nasty storms deeper into Texas where you have basically better ingredients for, for more fuel in the atmosphere. We call that CAPE. Um, so we need to watch out for that because if any storms fire up in central Texas, they will have to prevent the potential to really produce some significant hail. So watch out for these storms kind of south and southwest of Dallas that might move south of the city. These could be big hail producers right down here. They really could. You got a lot more fuel the further south you go. A lot more what we call thermodynamics. Okay. But uh, these continue to move through. And these are probably going to turn into a line of storms. We're getting into the wee hours of the morning. They might kind of blow through along the cold front through Houston as we're getting into the wee hours of the morning. Maybe around 6, 7 a.m. And then the active southern jet continues and i think that we just have a period of pretty active weather potentially for southwest texas i won't get you we're going to be able to move fully past the severe weather threat to, tonight so we'll begin to give you guys some real and good updates on what's going on deep in texas southwest texas tonight um the winter storm what's going on right now well in nebraska you got a huge shield of snow north platte seeing snow now where it was a mixture of sleet and snow, you're starting to switch mainly to snow. This area of snow will continue to drift and just this area of precipitation and move like this. Obviously, that's a terrible arrow. Obviously, you see Minneapolis um, on the radar here. This will move eventually all the way into the UP of Michigan and, and really affect also areas up here too where you have winter storm warnings. So here it comes. It, you know, it's snowing outside of Denver this morning. This isn't going to be a huge winter storm. It's really going to be quick hitting, but, you know, it's going to dro drop accumulating snow, so it's worth talking about. But this will continue to move through Nebraska and areas of even far eastern South Dakota. It'll start out as rain for most of western Iowa, but quickly switch to some a period of accumulating snow sometime around midday or late morning, midday, into the early afternoon today. And then rain will switch to, I would say, to, to snow in Minneapolis, I would say around 2, 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, this is all rain for a large portion of Wisconsin. I think you could get a period of some moderate snow sometime tonight in like areas like Des Moines, uh, probably around dinner time tonight. You know, some snow could fall even in northern sections of Missouri. And maybe even, you know, some flurries flying around as far south as uh, Kansas City sometime late this evening. This continues to kind of move through very heavy snow. Well, I wouldn't say very heavy, but some moderate to heavy snow falling in northeast Minnesota, northern Wisconsin. Rain switches to snow for the western UP of Michigan. But I can tell you for a lot of central and eastern areas of the UP of Michigan, and certainly all of Michigan down here, this is going to be all rain for a large portion of the storm until this low pressure moves on through cold air filters and behind it, and then as we're waking up tomorrow morning, that's when we have the lake effect enhancement that really cranks up um, and really starts to add additional snowfall for the Great Lakes regions. Okay, even all the way down into Lake Michigan, uh, you're going to have a flow basically off the eastern shores of Lake Michigan. And uh, even you know places down there near Lansing, Grand Rapids are going to see some snow flying around uh, Friday. And these could be some intense bands coming off of uh, the southern uh, the southern areas of Lake Superior. These could really drop some significant snowfall accumulations for the southern shores of Lake Superior. So, um, snowfall between now and the next 24 hours, a stripe of accumulating snow will you know really crank you up in northeast Nebraska, all the way up through Minnesota, portions of Iowa, and south and southeast South Dakota. So I really think Minneapolis could get maybe two to as much as four inches of snow today. We go up into the upper Midwest. And, um, you know, just between now and the next 24 hours, 
Okay, you know, they're going for a good bit of snow up here in the uh, you know western UP of Michigan. Um, the H triple R model does not reflect this much snow in the next 24 hours, but you know it's it's not all about the H triple R model. It's about other model guidance too, and already going for you know five to eight inches of snow anywhere from northeast Minnesota all the way through northern Wisconsin, all the way into the western half of the UP of Michigan. So more snow on top of snow. It's been a pretty I mean, the winter hasn't been bad up there. I mean, well, bad as in, you know, I, let me let me rephrase that. You know, as far as bad as in lack of snow, I guess I should say. But it ha if you're not a snow fan, then yes, it's been a pretty hefty winter up there. You guys have seen multiple systems. It seems like you get a system at least once a week. The southeast today, pretty quiet weather. Cold temperatures this morning will we'll warm, warm up into a nice day. It'll be a pretty warm day across the southeast today. Typical kind of mid-late March temperatures. Um, but, of course, some nasty weather will move into Arkansas overnight tonight. Line of storms potentially sweeps through the entire state later this evening. And then we're getting into western Tennessee. And I think that, you know, just after midnight, you guys could see uh, some, some rain, maybe heavy at times, moving into the western half of Tennessee, northern Mississippi. Um, and then this eventually... This line could potentially maintain overnight, and you're dealing with a little bit of a line of storms working its way through Huntsville, kind of you know around 6, 7 a.m., knocking on the door of uh, Birmingham, maybe you know maybe about mid-morning Jackson blowing through that area, kind of right around when the sun's coming up, and um, you know this sets the stage for a rainy day across the southeast of more and potential the potential for some severe storms uh, down here and the southern areas of the gulf states deep south places like that and you no know, this is getting well into tomorrow at this point but the northeast um you know maybe a some a, some some light precipitation could swing through northern new york state vermont maybe in the form of snow maybe in the form of rain it just depends on how high you are, you are up man i saw some crazy snowfall total it was somewhere in the hudson valley and i I can't make out the name of the city right now at the top of my head, but the name of the the town got a tenth of an inch of snow. But where the town, I think it starts with an S, but where the town sits is it's like right at the foot of a huge elevation increase that goes up to like two, three thousand feet up in the air. So this town got ten, a tenth of an inch of snow, which sits almost at sea level in the valleys, but that higher up elevation got 36 inches of snow and they were about a few miles from each other that is wild guys it really just tells you how elevation driven this storm was it really was guys pretty crazy um rain begins to blast into you know like ohio um and it's one place that, areas i have not been really talking about much but rain will move into the ohio valley the midwest great lakes region and eventually try to make its way into the mid-Atlantic. And this will be all rain for New York State. So tonight, you know, in western areas, the southern tier of New York State, western half of Pennsylvania, some rain will move in into the wee hours of the morning. And this will also set the stage for kind of a, a wet day for a lot of the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. Um, not a washout, but this certainly will be all rain for most of everybody as we're making our way uh, through our Friday but um, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. But this will be all snow in Maine for a large portion of the northern half of Maine. Temperatures today, it'll be a moving air mass, which means we have a sharp cold front digging into the southern plains. So, you know, you might rise all the way into about 70 degrees through about early afternoon in Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and then temperatures will dramatically drop by late afternoon. Same thing in Texas. I mean, the, the cold front will move through this morning. Uh, you might rise to 80 degrees right here in certain certain sections of northern Texas. And then temperatures dramatically drop into the 40s by the time you're heading off to bed. Uh, so, you know, just one of those sharp cold fronts. And look how cold the cold air is up here in the Dakotas, well into the teens before you even get into the coldest part of the morning. But today it'll be a beautiful day. 60s all the way up into southern PA, 70s down into the southeast, 60s and 70s. 60s all the way up into portions of the Ohio Valley, even maybe all the way up into Michigan. So uh, you got some big time warning, but this cold front will kind of sweep through and uh, really work its way eventually all the way to the southeast this weekend and, and create kind of a chilly weekend for everybody. But 
we're still watching um, this area in Texas. It's um, a tough one to figure out, but we'll start to dive into this a little bit more for this weekend. But some snow is possible deep down in Texas. It, it is, especially southwest Texas. Um, I really think we'll have a, a kind of a, a wet start to our weekend for the southeast. Um, but one thing I'm watching here is that with an active southern jet, cold air nearby, um, this could turn into just a wet weekend for the southeast. For example, it was looking like this rain was going to clear out in the southeast by the time we get into our Saturday morning. For most of the southeast, um, the rain clears out and you have a decent day clearing. But what I'm watching here is kind of another area of precipitation that might start to overrun portions of Georgia and the Carolinas. If we back it up about six runs, um, it really wasn't showing this. And we'll go all the way to the newest run for you know saturday night bang 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 look we're trending to more rain after the initial system for friday so uh might not be the best weekend weather wise in the southeast but we'll see how it goes that might change we're still watching that system uh early to midway next week still shows a little bit of snow for the mountains but that's only for one run of the gfs the canadian and the european have this suppressed into oblivion meaning it doesn't really have a storm anymore. It has the energy there, but it's suppressing it to the point where it's not even putting any moisture into the southeast. But we still watch this, but I can tell you for now, a solid 24 to 36 hour trend of this thing being suppressed has uh, certainly been underway. That's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless, and have yourselves a great and safe day out there.